It was an exciting time. Between 5,000 and 4,000 years ago, the Chinese built many cities and fortresses in what is now called the Age of Tribal States. Today, we connect and reshape our world with the internet. 4,000 years ago, tribal alliances and states were connecting with each other and reshaping their world through cultural exchange and through warfare. From this was born an early form of China's unity in diversity. As the stars wheeled over the turbulent world below, the social structures of China's independent states were converging from separate development to diversified unity. This episode looks at recent archaeological discoveries to help solve some mysteries from that time. Why did civilization suddenly decline in parts of China? And why did the Central Plains region go on gradually developing to become the core of the Chinese civilization? A great battle is about to be fought. Before the din of battle, the piercing cry of an eagle chills the hearts of the soldiers arrayed on each side of the battlefield. In the age of tribal states, endless wars marked the rise and fall of civilizations. In the winter of 1954, during excavations for an irrigation project near the city of Jingshan in Hubei province, the chance discovery of ancient pottery opened a door on history. The workers had stumbled on the ancient Shijia River culture. Further excavations revealed a cluster of over 50 ancient sites. They belonged to a mysterious culture that reached its zenith between 4,600 and 4,000 years ago. Then it suddenly collapsed. Surrounded by rivers at the foot of Mount Daohong, the Serja River culture occupied 1.2 million square meters. Its center was laid out in distinct functional areas for ritual sacrifice, burial, residential, and workshops. Judging by other Neolithic and Bronze Age settlements, the population of the Serja River culture is estimated to have been between 30 and 50,000. It was a highly developed and flourishing civilization. Bronze and jade artifacts discovered on the site, some inscribed with script-like symbols, all testify to a sophisticated culture. Nearby archaeological discoveries confirm that the Shijia River settlement was the dominant center of the Zhanghan Plain at this time. <laughs> The 
所以这个时候看来，当时是，在至少在石家河这个地方是有一个，应该讲是军事首领，或者是或者像那王这样的，啊这样的呃人物在里面。A crown-like hat, with curved horns above the ears, long protruding teeth, a square face, and olive-shaped eyes, with a large hook nose and a wide mouth. This jade head, found at the Shurja River site, is thought to depict the face of a god or shaman, showing that even at this early date, jade was being used as a means of communicating with the gods. It was carved with a complex technique of cutting, drilling, and polishing. Many remarkable jade artifacts, mostly from burial urns for adults, depict human heads, tiger heads, eagles, and cicadas. They reflect the unique beliefs of the Shurja River people. Yet mysteriously, in the middle period of this civilization, the city was completely abandoned. It becomes difficult even to find traces of human occupation. The late period of the culture saw dramatic changes. At that time, 这个文化更多的跟中南相像。Tribal warfare became endemic during the age of tribal states. The period roughly equates with the latter half of the legendary period of the Five Lords: Juan Shu, Di Ku, Yao, Shun, and Yu. Ancient records relate that Yao, Shun, and Yu launched wars against the Sun Miao people. The conflict between the ancient Han and Miao was no less important than that between the Yellow and Flame Emperors. The period of five to four thousand years ago was marked by alliances between the Han tribes around the middle reaches of the Yellow River, the Dongyi tribes in the Mount Taishan area, and the Miao tribes in the middle reaches of the Yangtze. The early exchanges and conflicts between the Shijia and Lungshan cultures of the Central Plains focused on the Jiang Han Plain, southwest Henan, and southern Shanxi. Archaeologists have reconstructed the locations of the Miao and Sun Miao tribes and their relations with the Shijia. In the text, there are also records of the Miao and the Sun Miao. The Sun Miao, in general, is our area. 叫长江这个区域，可能就是因为当时那种战争，这个城市就废弃了。According to legend, Chief Huan Do of the Sun Miao tribe was a subject of the Emperor Yao 4,000 years ago. He led a rebellion, so the emperors Yao, Shun, and Yu waged war on the Sun Miao. All this time, the Jiang Han Plain suffered constant natural disasters. According to the philosopher Mo Tzu, there was a catastrophic earthquake. The Taiping Imperial Encyclopedia, written in the 10th century, records that the earth shook and a spring gushed out to herald the defeat of the Sun Miao. Emperors Yao, Shun, and Yu seized the opportunity and led the Han troops south. In 70 days, the Sun Miao army was defeated and the tribe faded from history. To archaeologists' surprise, among the jade objects unearthed from the Shijia River site was a ceremonial blade. It was the symbol of the Xia dynasty, and it proves that the southern movement of the Central Plains culture eventually eclipsed the Shijia River culture. And so we return to the two sides in the great battle mentioned earlier in this episode.
As the Miao tribes in the south grew weaker, the Han people in the central plains grew stronger. Around 4,300 years ago, a great city, Tao Se, rose upon the banks of the Fenhe River in southern Shangxi province. It was a capital city, a city of illusions and reality. Here, a cultured king lived in a great palace. The city walls were strong, the warehouses were well stocked, and the population exceeded 10,000. There were royal palaces, districts for aristocrats and commoners, areas for worship, storage facilities, and workshops. The discovery of a red copper bell signals the emergence of China's age of metal and stone. The upper classes were affluent, while the vast majority were poor. The distinctions between classes were reflected in a pyramidal social structure. On the western slope of Mount Tar, to the south of Tasso village in Shanxi province, archaeologists unearthed a fragment of a broken pot. They were amazed by two orange-colored symbols on the front and back. The symbol on the front resembles the word culture in the Chinese oracle bone script. Reasoning from pictograms, experts believe the symbol on the back represents the word Yao, meaning a large city built with rammed earth. Taking the front and back together, Yao of culture would signify praise for Emperor Yao. The symbols have also been interpreted as life, change, or state, but it is generally agreed that they are linked to Emperor Yao or Emperor Yu. Legend and historical tradition say that Emperor Yao lived in the Linfen Basin, which is where the Tasa site is located. Tasa was a capital city for 400 years from 2400 BC, the period preceding the Xiao dynasty and corresponding to the time of Yao and Shun. People cannot help but link Tasa with their legendary capital. This huge tomb, IIM-22, was excavated in 2002. It contained a painted bowl, a large painted basin, a jade chef's knife, and ritual objects such as jade tablets, jade bowls, and jade discs, as well as painted pots and other royal objects. This was evidence that the city had a prestigious cemetery for royal burials. The city covered 280 hectares. Quite by chance, an imposing observatory for astronomical observations and calendar calculations was found in a small settlement within the larger city of middle period Tausa. Restoration revealed that the ancients faced east towards Mount Tar to observe the upper and lower lines projected by the rising sun through the 11 gaps between the pillars. By this means, they calculated the 20 solar seasonal terms of their calendar. This observatory proved to be almost 500 years older than Stonehenge. The people 确实是在全世界都是绝无仅有的。目前考古发现只有唯一的这一例。Not far from the observatory, archaeologists also found a large middle period tomb. Against the wall of the tomb stood a timber pole. The pole was decorated with rings in black, green and pink. In a wall niche next to the pole, they found qi small jade objects with round holes. What was the purpose of these items? Why were they chosen as funerary objects to be buried in the tomb along with the dead? The archaeologists were puzzled. 
that between 2005 and 2009, studies of the site measurements led to a breakthrough. The ancient Chinese used sundials as astrological instruments and to measure shadows cast by the sun. The pole was called the vertical table. The sundial, a flat board with markings to measure the length of the shadows cast by the pole, was laid flat in a north-south direction. Now, the most significant legacy of Emperor Yao's reign is said to be his calendar, which formulated the seasonal division of a solar year in a similar fashion to the modern calendar, along with detailed observations of sun, moon, and stars. The discovery of the observatory and of the sundial once again supports the theory that the Tasso ruins are the ancient capital of Emperor Yao. But further analysis of the Tasso sundial has led to a more radical theory. Biao 都城定在地中将自己的国家放在中土所以地中之都中土之国就是中国这个概念最初的缘起陶寺这一套规表的发现从考古实物上来证明最初中国的概念是在陶寺文化时期形成的 According to traditional sources, there were already 10,000 tribes in China in the period of Yao, Shun, and Yu. The Book of History states that Emperor Yao united 10,000 tribes. The Book of Han says that 10,000 states were united in the period of Yao and Shun. The term 10,000 merely indicates a large number. But archaeological studies of the Longshan Age, which began four and a half thousand years ago, have found cultural patterns demonstrating that many independent cities did rise in this area. In 1979, the ruins of an important stone city were discovered northwest of the ruins of Taosu. They were near Shimu village in the north of the Lurs Plateau of Shanxi province. The site unveiled yet another mystery of the dawn of the Chinese civilization. Listed as one of the 10 largest archeological field sites in the world, the Shimo ruins were described by Chinese experts as earth shattering. The Shimo site consists of an imperial city platform, an inner city and an outer city, residential areas, pits, earth pit tombs, stone coffin tombs, and urn burials. All were discovered. Dated to around 4,000 years ago and covering about 425 hectares, it is the largest Neolithic city yet unearthed in China. This is the Hundred 
，有的就是色彩那面朝下，所以这个就是色彩朝朝下的那个，只能看它的背面的这个粘附面。这个刚好呢，就给我们又提供了一个证据。你看它后面这样的草筋非常明显，就是我们叫草拌泥的这种东西，就说明它原来就是粘附在墙体上面的彩绘的图案。In 2012, archaeologists found traces of murals on the eastern gate of the outer city. Painted on a lime-plastered surface were geometric patterns in red, yellow, black and orange. They constitute the largest discovery of murals from the Longshan age. What distinguishes the Shimo site from the more common earthen remains found in other regions is that the entire city is made of stone. Its walls, 10 kilometers long, two kilometers wide, and several meters high, enclosed a huge city with a population estimated to be as high as 40,000. So, to build this city, it has a lot of power to build this city. It has a lot of power to build this city, to build this city, to build this city. 来给他修建，这时候人们已经有了这种等级的观念，财富也有了分化啊。那么谁来维系他时髦的统治者，他的生存的资源？哎，那么考古学这几年的工作呢，表明在这个四千年前后，我们现在的看到的不毛之地，实际上是一四千年前后的时候时候呢，是一个人口非常密集、高度发达的一个人类居住区。Globally speaking, Shimo was situated on a trade route crossing the Eurasian steppe region and at a strategic point linking the entire land mass. Compared with the stone city of Troy, which flourished a thousand years later in what is now Turkey, Shimo was far larger and more impressive. But why was Shimo built of stone on the Lurs Plateau of northern Shanxi province? That question has intrigued both Chinese and international experts. In the winter of late December 1975, as China prepared to usher in the Year of the Dragon, locals in Shimo village were gossiping as usual about the jade artifacts rumored to lie hidden in the walls of the ancient city. Experts were thrilled to find this small jade figurine with a single eye. The ancient text, the classic of mountains and seas, recorded 36 states beyond China, including a country populated by one-eyed people. This double-sided carved jade head stands 45 centimeters high. On each side is a large olive-shaped eye, a hooked nose, and a slightly open mouth. One ear protrudes at the back, and the hair is piled in a bun. The experts were puzzled. Was it really a depiction of the legendary one-eyed people? And if not, then who was it? Why does it look so different from the faces of the people of the Central Plains? 我们正在做联合的研究，我们和这个哈佛大学的学者在做 DNA 的分析，也有学者将他这这批石雕的人头像呢，和阿尔泰地区、新疆地区、俄罗斯远东地区的一些同时期的文化联系起来。The Shimo and Tarsir sites are situated quite close to each other in river valleys. The first in Shunmu County in Shanxi Province, and the second in Shangfen County in neighboring Shangxi. Their geographical similarity provides a point of reference in the study of their history and cultures. Based on cultural and stratigraphic dating, and the artifacts found at Shimo, preliminary findings place the Shimo and Tausa cultures in almost the same historical period. The two cultures coexisted for at least 300 years.
Although Shimo was built on a larger scale than Talser, very few artifacts relating to royal power have been found there. This could indicate that as a tribe or state, Shimo held an inferior status to Talser. If Taose was the capital of Emperor Yao, then who was the ruler of its similarly located neighbor, the great stone city of Shimon? According to the ancient texts, records of the Grand Historian and the Book of Han, the tomb of the Yellow Emperor Huangdi was at Cheng in northern Shanxi, not far from Shimon. Could the Yellow Emperor or his descendants have lived at Shimo? For我们做考古的人来说,是讲究证据的,因为把历史文献中的人物和考古学文化去对比,这个需要反反复复多重的论证,最强有力的证据才能去这么说,所以我们目前也是有一些保留。an intriguing question arises, however. Like Tao Tse, Shimo suffered a sudden decline at the peak of its glory and became a sarcophagus of stone. What upheavals befell the people of ancient Shimo? Why did the 300-year-old city fall into ruin? Recent studies in environmental archaeology show that around 2260 BC, the Shimo region entered a dry cooling period. A drastic drop in temperature, droughts, and subsequent environmental disasters had a serious impact on agriculture. Crops were partially or completely destroyed, and the number of archaeological sites from the time drops sharply. The ancient population was significantly reduced and suffered large-scale displacement. Shimao一直要注意一个很重要的问题,就是Shimao一直所处的位置,它长处在我们现在所说的农牧交错带上。它比其他区域来说,受环境变化的影响就要更明显,更剧烈,反应更强烈一些。因此呢,石卯遗址的衰亡应该和当地的环境变化有直接的关系。石卯的人群,我们认为是最大的可能性是在这个1800年前后呢,北方的人群可能是南下了,可能发生了一次大的这种人口的迁移。现在还不能排除
More than 30 skulls, mostly of young males, were piled in a large ditch, normally used for dumping leftover pieces of stone and bone. Many of the skulls bore cut marks. Some resembled masks, with only the bones of the face remaining. Some skulls had a few neck bones attached. The bones of 40 to 50 human beings were discarded along with animal bones. It was an appalling discovery. Dangbu 而这件例子发现是非常有意义，说明了是谁在破坏陶瓷中期的工厂。那么这些人往往很有可能就是对陶瓷中期政权的推翻者、征服者，很有可能就是他们。There is every indication that the downfall of the aristocracy and the elite culture of Tarsa was the result of riots from within and invasions from without that eventually brought the 300-year-old city and its culture to an end. This is the leading explanation of ancient Tarsus' demise. Drastic changes in climate forced the people of Shimo to abandon their city in northwest Shanxi province. A similar fate also befell the once glorious Langzhu culture of the Yuhang region in southeastern China. While one untimely end was owing to drought and cold, the other resulted from natural disasters caused by rising temperatures. So 5,300 The pottery excavated at the Langju site is typically polished black earthenware made on a potter's wheel in regular shapes with a round base and with carved and painted decorations of holes and bamboo or string patterns. Even more remarkable than its pottery are its jade artifacts, including bi or discs, song bowls, huang pendants, Huan rings and Ju beads. Most were excavated from tombs. A large number of jade ritual bowls and jade battle axes attracted archaeologists' attention. The technique of jade carving in the Chinese Neolithic period reached its zenith in the Langju culture. Many decorative lines are hair thin, no more than a tenth of a millimeter. 
How this was achieved with the resources available at that time remains a mystery. Then, around 4,000 years ago, the prosperous kingdom of Langju met with sudden devastation. Archaeologists believe this was partly owing to over-exploitation and wastage of resources in the production of jade, an industry without any practical value. The depletion of the jade mines led to the decline and eventual collapse of the Langju culture. Other researchers believe the culture was significantly affected by its geological location and a degraded ecosystem. All over the world, people share stories of massive floods in ancient times. The Sumerians recorded the floods of Mesopotamia. The Bible records Noah's Ark. There is a great flood in Greek mythology. There is the Chinese legend of terrible deluges in the time of Emperor Yao. All these stories form a shared memory of a terrible event that profoundly marked the ancient world. Global warming in the late Neolithic period provoked the melting of glaciers and the rise of sea levels. Ultimately, the catastrophe came from the sea. Sudden floods or tsunamis devastated the thousand-year-old Langju culture, and eventually it was entirely destroyed. Today, throughout the Langju site, we can still find traces of the flood in layers of mud, peat, and silt. It's possible that parts of the site remain buried beneath the waters of Taihu Lake. Following the rise of many cultures in this age of tribal states, Chinese society experienced some drastic upheavals and transformations. Around 2000 BC, centuries-old cultures in the Central Plains region began to decline into obscurity. Yet, another culture based on the culture of the Central Plains and covering a large geographical area flourished and absorbed elements from many other regions. In Henan province, near the northern slopes of Mangshan Mountain and on the banks of the Yellow River, a major secret of Chinese history lay buried for generations under the small village of Arli To until the late 1950s. From the 19th to the 16th centuries BC, as the capital of the First Kingdom of China, this place was the center of the splendid Xia dynasty and the backdrop for the epic of the successive Xia, Shang, and Zhou dynasties. But if you say that the two countries, Tao, and Sima, are the countries, then they are not a concept of the two countries. This is what most scholars do not agree. So what I would like to say is that if you say that 如果说前面那些属于初始国家的话啊，原始阶段的国家的话，那么二里头就是一种广域王权国家，我管它叫广域王权国家，可以掌控广大区域的一种王权比较兴盛的这样一种国家，所以我管它叫国上之国。我们说，中华民族从多元到一体的这么一个过程。如果再做一个形象的比喻呢，我们说波澜壮阔的邦国时代，呃，是满天星斗的话呢，那么由于一个大的政体的存在呢，
导致满天星斗转化为月明星稀，所以一轮明月出来了，使得它周围的这个星斗呢变得暗淡起来，而这个所谓的明月呢，就是二里头一子。The word China or Middle Kingdom first appeared on a bronze wine vessel called Herzun during the early Western Zhou Dynasty. The inscription called the Luoyang Plains, including Yangshu, China, which means center of the world. From being a sky full of stars, Chinese civilization was beginning to coalesce, like hundreds of rivers flowing into the sea. There is still very much to learn about the rise and fall of the age of tribal states. However, in those years, China was gradually taking shape. Growing knowledge of our world and its climate, and ancient relics uncovered by the wind, are telling us about China's past and China's future. <laughs>